What's up everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 109. How are you guys doing? Welcome! It's Sunday, November 6th, everyone. Hello, you janky motherfucker. <laughs> What's going on? Holy shit. At this point, I think some of you guys might have already received your chug pedals. We started shipping them out this past week. Hope you're enjoying them as much as I do. They're fucking sick. I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Let's head off into the news. OzFest 2022 will be a virtually staged event taking place in the metaverse. That's such a disappointing title. Just in a couple of days, in November 10 until November 13, uh, there will be an online OzFest in Decentraland virtual world. It is being reported that over 100 acts are expected to perform, including Ozzy Osbourne. A complete roster is expected to release in the coming weeks, so be sure to stay tuned. Set in an otherworldly cyber... <sighs> of course it's cyberpunk. Landscape being reclaimed by nature. The festival will feature 15 uniquely designed stages that will see performances from 1 plus... 100 plus music, musical artists. Natural the movie is a positive one, regardless so how you feel about the metaverse for the ailing Osborne? In a recent appearance uh, on British television, his wife Sharon said, "When I look at my oh, when I look at my husband, my heart breaks for him. I'm sad for myself to see him that way, but what he goes through is worse. When I look at him and he doesn't know, I'm like crying." Since having been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease though, Osborne has been adamant about not fending away into the sunset. I will be up there on stage if I have to fucking crawl up there, he said in a recent conversation with Mel Hammer. Admirable, I must say. Holy shit. Ozzy Osbourne. And you know, I think he's actually gonna stick to his word on this one. He seems to be that type of guy. He's just never gonna end until he, the day he dies, you know? What do I think about uh, Mel show in the metaverse? I don't know, maybe I have to check it out before I state an opinion about it, but it's sort of lame, no? <laughs> you know, I'm one of those people that have tickets for Aussie next year in Stockholm, in May. Uh, I'm not really sure it's gonna happen. I really hope it's gonna happen, because it's gonna be the absolute last time you could see Aussie, probably. Unless it's in the metaverse. I think maybe what they're doing here is that they're starting to get people used to the metaverse, so maybe in the future they can start doing, you know, uh, holograms or, you know, 3D, uh, you know, CGI Aussie for a live show and just continue on the, with the legacy and, you know, continue on with the getting of monies. <laughs> what do you think about this? Are we ready for this? Maybe, I don't know. Damon Stain and Gibson adds new Flying V EXP guitars to uh, the... to the roster. Do you feel like this is like old news by now? Like, th th this is not from this past week, right? This is all from like two weeks ago. Well, it might be because this Wola was pre-recorded before I went on vacation. But you know, I really want to give you guys a Swola. Is that okay? I don't want to disappoint you guys. And I had vacation this past week and I didn't want to record a Swola when I was on vacation, you know? Uh, just trying to take care of myself and you guys. So if it seems like the news are a little bit old, it's because they are. <laughs> So this is the limited edition. Let me go. Okay. Gibson guitars. Yeah, I love you, Gibson. I love you. Okay, shop now. I want to shop now. Uh, there it is. Dude, that actually looks pretty fucking sick. I must say, that's a very low resolution picture right there. Gibson, get your shit together. Okay. What's this then? Can I see this? This is way better. Okay, look at that. That looks pretty fucking sick. Look, 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 look. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. That looks great. Seven thousand US dollars. Holy shit, knob. God damn it. That's a lot of money. But you know, it skips them. Who cares? I'm going full on QC right now. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see the black guitar. Oh shit! What happened? Okay, look at this. Ooh. I heard that black is the new black. That looks cool. Oh, that's nice. I like this. That is pretty sick. And he still has the, the picture of Dave Mustaine with a Jackson guitar on the back of the headstock. That's okay. It's just a silhouette of a man. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, for $7,000, you can get a limited edition Dave Mustaine Flying V uh, EXP. Uh, 
Out of stock. Okay, the red one is out of stock. So I guess I cannot get a hold of one. Uh, not that I'm gonna. I just wanted to see the, the, the European price. And while the US models are cool and all, I think most of us are waiting for the Epiphone Day Mustang guitars. They were saying that they're gonna release Kramer and Epiphone uh, guitars. And if you're an avid follower of Megadeth, maybe you've been following his guitar tech, Brian Jones, on his Instagram. Look at him. Here it is in a very nice car. But Brian has shared pictures from the tour of some other guitars. Look at this. So as I said when they first launched the new Gibson a, a collaboration with Dave, you know, they would have the Kramer guitars being more like what uh, Damon State might actually have wanted and not, you know, the classical flying V. You know, he's always been, you know, the pointy V guy, right? So it seems that he's getting this with Kramer as anticipated. Uh, look at this. This is the Kramer with a green one. That looks cool, man. Okay, let's go back. There was this black one. I want to see the black. Oh, that's, that's just one picture. A little bit of sneak peek of the Kramers, but also a little sneak peek of the Epiphone stuff that's coming. Look at this asshole right there. That is pretty friggin' sick, I must say. Look at that. That looks great. With Fishman Fluence pickups. This is the Prophecy Day Mustang guitar. So, obviously a high spec Epiphone signature guitar, much like the Jerry Cantrell guitar that I tried, and Matt Heath, I also believe, has one. And all of them have Fishman for some reason. Uh, will they be the same as in the other guitars? I don't know. I guess this uh, Prophecy Davis Mustang guitar is probably gonna be like a, a 1100 US dollars or something like that, much like the Jerry Cantrell and the Matt Heafy. You know, I like the, the uh, Jerry Cantrell Epiphone that I got. It's uh, for the money. I think it's a it's a good price. I think that's what people have been waiting for, to be honest. Okay, but here we go again. Here here are the seven thousand uh, dollar guitars again. Look at him holding them like that. Oh, that's dirty. I like that one. That's cool. Okay, confirmed. Mick Mars is quitting Motley Crue due to his worsening ankylosing spondylitis. No. How warm Mac Mars Sike Ring Marco Aro? No. So obviously it's been known that Mac Mars has had a bunch of health issues and problems for a very, very long time. He has been one of those, you know, like Ozzy Osbourne. He's been up on stage even how, you know, e even if he's like in the worst condition, somehow he's been put on that stage and he's, he's, he's been, and he performed, basically. I guess we come to the point where, you know, it's just, way too painful for Mick Mars to perform anymore, which is very, very sad. But for Motley Crue's sake, they got John Five replacing him. So an insane guitar player replacing Mick Mars. We'll just have to see what happens. But uh, after after the next tour, will will anything happen? Will they continue? They, they will probably continue. Just like with all the other news, you know, about uh, Ivan Moody and the Metaverse. It's all about the... Huh? Also, Pantera, Judas Priest members, form a new band called Elegant Weapons. Debut album due out spring 2023. So it's a, basically a supergroup with members of Pantera, Rex Brown, and Judas Priest, uh, Richie Faulkner, I guess. Priest guitarist Richie Faulkner and drummer Scott Travis and Spanish singer Ronnie Romero, who's done Time in Rainbow, Michael Schenker Group, and numerous other bands. All right, look at this. How cool is that? Elegant Weapons. I'd love to hear this supergroup. It, you know, I really like all the musicians that are involved in this. Uh, Richie Faulkner is an absolute uh, legend, obviously. And, you know, Rex Brown, man, Rex Brown. I just hope that it's going to be something that will stick, you know, because uh, Rex Brown doesn't have the, uh, the the best reputation of staying in bands and sticking with a band. Uh, but I really hope he will uh, at this point. And I'm really excited to hear what they will come up with. Also, the show in Santiago... Man, are you dying? Poor thing. It's good on the way down, it's just up that it's getting, like, janky as hell. Let's watch together. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Good job. Good job. No, but Pantera sells out their Santiago Chile show, which was a cap of 5,400 people. And now they moved up to the Movie Star Arena. 
which is a 17,000 seat multi-purpose indoor arena. So basically, they sold out on tickets. They noticed that, you know, there was probably a very, very huge demand still on the tickets. They moved to a 17,000 arena and also added Sepultura to the bill as well. Obviously, this is awesome news because it means that a lot of people want to go see Pantera. I just really hope that it's not going to be a problem for me getting a ticket somewhere. It seems like the pressure is really high. I'm thinking like this, they're starting here with like Central America and South America shows and festivals. As soon as they go to the US to tour, I probably have to go and watch a show uh, in the US. Uh, hopefully, that's, that's my plan at least. When I see a bunch of shows in the US being announced, I will get a ticket to some show in the US. I just have to go. Even if they're coming later to Europe, I... I still, I still need to go. And with this piece of news, it just shows the uh, high demand of Pantera being back. And uh, it makes me really warm in my heart, but a little bit worried too that I might not get a ticket. Oh, poor Ola, get a ticket, would you? <laughs> Next piece of news. Nightwish Floor Jansen diagnosed with breast cancer. The only comment I have on this is fuck cancer. Seriously. Uh, you know, since this was recorded a couple weeks back and I don't really have current news and I'm not really a fan of creating fake news uh, Other than maybe it's oh everyone say happy birthday. It's Jen's birthday today. Jen Majura She plays in Motley Crue now. I, I'm not an advocate of creating fake news I figured we will watch a video of rock stars falling off and on a stage. That's fun, right? No? <laughs> so Rockfeed has a collection of uh, rock stars falling off stages I figured we would check it out. I don't think I've seen these. Dave Grohl of Food Fighters. Holy shit, he's chugging that beer, all right. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. Oh, he's back up. No problem. Now, that's not the time where he broke his leg or something. Steven Tyler. Oh, he's getting, with, getting on with the ladies. <laughs> I used to do those as a kid too, you know, where you go over the, over the pipe. Fred Durst. No, Shaggy too. What a pussy. Goodness, pull it off. What? Who was that? That is Fred Durst, but Shaggy too dope. Oh shit, he tried to fucking kick him. <laughs> what the hell is that kick? Oh, it's the guy from Insane uh, Cloud Posse. Another Slipknot. Sid Wilson! I actually saw Sid Wilson myself falling down a fucking t uh, from the second floor of the show with Slipknot in, uh, in 2000 in Stockholm. Uh, I think he was like stage diving, just like he's doing right now, except that no one caught him. So the rest of the show he's like doing the DJ things like this, but his arm was fucking broken or something. He was doing this ex exact thing. Oh, he wants them to move there. We gotta catch him! <laughs> we gotta catch him! This poor fad, it's like, he's like, oh shit, well, let's catch him, it's just fucking four meters off. Oh, get the shit out of my way! Oh my god. Well, that wasn't really a falling off stage. He f***ing just threw himself out of there. There you go. Was that funny? No. Great. Thank you. The news. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. All right. Just as I was sitting recording with Swola, I heard a little ding dong on the door. And lo and behold, it was DHL. Would a package from Peach Guitars? Hell yeah, baby. I'm very, very excited for this. And I've been waiting for this for a while. I have to get a knife. I think these guitars were announced like at the beginning of the year or something. It was like a really long time ago. So uh, I almost forgot about it, but here it is today. Oh shit. Sometimes I wish I had a friend that could help me with this. Do you want to be my friend? Please. What? Why is it stuck? Wohin? Wo bist du? Meine Freund? Wo bist du stucken? Stucken in meine Arsch. 
I've been practicing my German because my son has started to uh, uh, read German now. What? What the fuck is wrong? What is wrong? My Kinder. Wohin kann ich nicht äh, geöffnen? Das Paket mit äh, deiner electric guitar. Why is it stuck? What's wrong? Oh, did they? Oh, what a what a bunch of assholes. Uh, no, they're not really. It's it's good people. It's the people at Peach Guitars. They're just very careful with how they ship their shit. You know what? Fuck this box. Goodbye. See ya. They made like a Frankenstein's monster kind of box with this. Ah! It's like stuck in a... Mother... I just want to open my guitar right now. Is that okay? How many boxes can you ship something in, man? Ah. Mother... Just give me my guitar! I'm sorry, guys. It's Friday and my attention span is so... So small. So small. All right, shit. Look at that. It's an ESP guitar or maybe an LTD. Huh? Ah, oh, it's one of these. I'm still not sure how to get this thing out of here. What the hell? Oh, come on, baby. I have the handle. Shit. Okay. Look at this. It comes in a sleeve. Not too good of a quality of a sleeve, by the way. Ooh, oh my lord. That case looks absolutely insane. Look at this. All right, let me grab this. We're going into the room where you can actually see things. But look at the case, man. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Look at this case. Dude, what? That looks f sick. Some sort of cloth. All right, I'm not sure I'm ready for this. It's gonna be a mace ball, so I'm gonna open it like this. Oh shit. But I'm all tired, man. Dude, I'm extremely excited. Okay, you guys ready? Of course, okay. Responsible guitar builders, they have these in plastic. Uh, plastic <laughs> and plastic pockets like this give an extra little protection to things and penises and vagina penises. It's a cloth and a pick tin or James Hatfield hat hat. He has a hat. Oh my arsloch. That looks f sick. Oh. Okay, you guys ready? You guessed it right, people. You guessed it right. It's the new snake bite. Holy shit! With the camo, look at that. It's the LTD James Hatfield snake bite. Oh my god, that looks so good. EMG pickups, two nomadic bridge right there. Battery compartment back there. Locking tuners from ESP. Dude, what? Made in Korea. And uh, these have been incredibly delayed for some reason. I don't know why. And I can see on this serial number that was made in November 2021. So why did it arrive so late? Something was holding them up. I don't know what it was. But this is my absolute first snake bite guitar, man. I always want to get one, but they're really hard to come by. Like even the regular snake bike guitars are not that easy to get. Even from Toman, they're always sold out. So they're selling very well, I must say. Well, I finally got a hold of this. Oh shit, and f man, it looks stunning as hell. Look at that little inlay right there. It's James von Hatfield. Dude, that looks so slick. Damn, son. Damn, son. I know exactly where this guitar is gonna go. I'm gonna bring it with me. It's gonna go in this room. All right, on the right there. Turn on the lights. Look at that. That looks so good right there. Holy shit. I'm incredibly excited, obviously. And the point with getting this is obviously to make a demo of this guitar. 
And uh, I've been trying to get a snake by for a long, long while. And then they announced this, and Peach Guitars were really nice to just reach out and said that they had a, a, a one that they could sell to me. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Holy shit, man. It looks really good on this wall, too, man. Holy shit. I'm not going to play it today. You will have to wait for the demo on my channel, okay? But holy shit. Damn, man. That looks so sick. Unboxing. Question of the day where my beautiful YouTube members get to ask me questions through the uh, Old England Discord channel and I get to answer them. And today's question is from Nicholas. So, let's go. Old England to Sweden. How do you keep your studio so clean? I don't ever see dust anywhere. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. Legit question. How do we keep things so clean in here? Uh, well, the thing is that it's more about being strategic about things. I mean, if you see from here, it is really clean, right? I mean, sure, you have the cables and the coffee cup and all that, but what you're not seeing is what's down here. There's like a lot of bullshit here. And also behind the camera, there's a lot of bullshit. Over there, there's a lot of bullshit that you probably can't see on the camera. So, you know, being a YouTuber, it's a lot about just shoving shit at the side out of the camera's view. So right now we try and keep it clean in the office because, you know, I'm not the only guy who's in here. Uh, there's uh, four other people as well that have to enjoy being at the office. So, uh, you know, there's a strict routine at cleaning shit up. It's really tough for me because, uh, you know, I, I like having shit around. But uh, it's also good for me because then I have to clean up and, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out a system where I can keep it clean and, uh, you know, keep it organized, basically. And now that we have a bigger office, it's a lot simpler, actually. Going back to when I was recording everything from uh, the condo that me and Luis lived in, we didn't have any space at all for all my shit, basically. So it was just shit all over the place and then I was basically just moving shit all over the room to be able to film in different directions. So uh, right now we do clean a lot and uh, you know I go with the, the, the dust wipe on the guitars and all that. It's something that's incredibly needed when you have so much stuff in the room, you know? So thank you so much, Nicholas, for that question. If you want to be able to ask me a question in the Son of Ola, you can become a YouTube member and uh, you can go into the Discord and send in your video question. And uh, maybe it'll be Soul Nicholas next week too. How about that? My friends, that's it for Sunday with Ola for today. I have a little tip for you. Holidays are coming. You can get gift cards from OlaEnglandShop.com. If you know of someone that wants like an Old England t-shirt or some Old England merch and you have no idea what to get, you can buy them a gift card for this holiday. How about that? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Team No Sleep. Thank you. Also, there won't be a live stream tomorrow. It will happen later this week. I will announce when. Okay, uh, but I'm out of town tomorrow as well. So thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. You've been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Like and subscribe. Sorry, uh, shit. Hello. <laughs>